Hey, welcome to this video. Today it's going to be about solving trig equations. This time we're looking at all the values. So this is going to be actually a pretty quick video, I think. Um, it's the same stuff as the last one, only this time we're looking at why we have a bunch of values. And in fact, we have infinite number of values. So um, in your, what the objective here is that you should be able to solve a trigonometric equation for all values of x. So let's take a look here at um, something I have here. I have a a graph. Actually, let me go back to my let me go back to my slide here. So our first example is going to be solve the equation two cosine x minus one for all values of x. So I want to show you two cosine x, and here's two cosine x. So I have the graph of two cosine x, and I'm going to make that equal to y equals one. And notice here that I have uh, all these values. You know, I have pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, even over here, I have negative pi over 3, negative 5 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3. And if I keep going, I can, I can zoom out of here. Um, and if, if I zoom out, you know, it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it, it keeps going, and we have intersections forever. This line's going to intersect this forever. So how do we write down the solution for this forever? Well, we can do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation just like we solved the other ones. So we're going to have um, 2 cosine x minus 1 equals, oh, sorry, we don't want to do that, equals 1. We're going to divide by 2. And we're going to have cosine x equals one half. So then we're going to look on the unit circle and find out where the cosine is one half. That's the x coordinate. So the x coordinates right here, one half. And we also have this one here. So what happens is that, you know, we can start, we can have this one and then we can go all the way around the circle and be coterminal and get there again. And then we can go all the way around the circle again and get there again. And then all the way around the circle again and get there again. And then again and again and again. And we're just going to go around the circle. Well, if we're going to go around the circle, okay, so we're going to start at pi over 3. If we go around the circle, that's, that's 2 pi radians, right? So if I have pi over 3, I add 2 pi. I'm going to go all around the circle. Well, how am I going to go all the way around the circle an infinite number of times and express that in this? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a k right here. And I'm going to say k is any integer, any integer value. So if I had a 0, then I have pi over 3. If I have 1, then I have pi over 3 plus 2 pi. I'll go all the way around. If I have 2, I have pi over 3 plus 4 pi. So I'll go all around twice. If I have pi over 3 plus, this is 3, it's 6 pi. I'll go all around 6 times. If it was negative 1, it'd be pi over 3 plus negative 2 pi. I'll go around backwards. So that's how we get around the circle. So now this is not the first one. Again, we add another one. We have 5 pi over 3. And we're going to add 2k pi. So the significance of this 2k pi, this gives us all values. It gives us all the values, all the infinite values. Um, and it allows us to go around the circle multiple times. Sometimes we don't need to go around the circle all the way. We just have to go maybe halfway. So we maybe say plus k pi. So it all depends on how far it takes us to get to the next one. Here, there's no real easy one because, you know, we're going to go here and then just a little bit and here and there's a little bit. So it's easier just to split these two and make 2k pi. All right, so let's take a look at, um, at the next one here. Here's my next example. Solve sine of 2x minus cosine x equals 0. So we're going to solve this the same way we did the other one. I'm going to change this to 2 sine x cosine x. And remember that um, sine 2x is a double angle identity. So since we have a, a double angle identity, okay, a double angle, we want to change it to its identity form. Minus cosine x equals 0. So then um, let's uh, factor out the cosine. So we got 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. And set cosine x equal to 0. And 2 sine x equal to 0. When we solve this, we're going to get sine x equals 1 half. So now we're going to look the cos we're going to look for the value that we're going to get a x value. We're going to get right here pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. 
Now we could just put them both and then put plus 2k pi, but notice that this, the distance from here to here is a pi, pi units. And then we go again and we got pi units. And then we go again and we got pi units. And then we go again and we got pi units. Then we go again and we got pi units. Then we go again and we got pi units. So you should see here that we're just going pi units each time. So I'm going to say plus k pi because it goes one pi, then two pi, then three pi, then four pi, then five pi, then six pi, then seven pi, then eight pi, then nine pi, then 10 pi, then I can't count any more pi. So we can just say k pi. So this will work for this first part. And we're gonna need, um, let's, let's use a different color for, for this. Okay, x equals uh, one half. So we're doing the sine, so that's the y coordinate. So we got here pi over 6 and uh, 5 pi over 6. Now this one, it doesn't easily go like, it doesn't go pi, pi, pi. So we're going to have to put both of them down. Pi over 6 plus 2k pi. Okay, if we have to go all the way around the circle. And then the other one is 5 pi over 6 plus 2k pi. Again, going all the way around the circle. Okay, and that's it, guys, that's it. So it's the same work as last time, only now you're either adding 2k pi, because we've got infinite number of solutions, or k pi if we go around the circle once. So again, we're using our unit circle. All right, that's all I got for you. Um, we'll practice these more in class tomorrow. See you later, alligator.